Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are welcome. Today is a prophecy that has two parts. It was actually one long word that I received from the Lord on October 15, 2021. So the prophecy has been with me for some time. It is already published on the master's voice and the Lord was speaking to me over the last few days to handle this prophecy. So now that I have some time, I'm going to try and do part one and part two of this prophecy. We'll be looking at the death of presidents. We'll be looking at the sin of idolatry and we will be looking at some of the judgments that the Lord God has said for some time will come to the nation of America for the sin that she refuses to repent of. And so the title of this prophecy is called Hovercrafts and Abominable Weapons of War. Part two of this prophecy also will deal with things that I saw concerning Russia and their coming to the United States of America. Now, in this prophecy, in all of the prophecies, usually in the beginning, there is teaching. Prophecy just serves uh, very few functions. And when it comes to end times prophecy, especially the type of prophecy that the Lord has trusted to me, the purpose of it is to turn the eyes of people back to Jesus. So prophecy isn't necessarily to make you feel good or even to justify things that you may have already discovered in your own life through diligence, through prayer, through God waking you up, or through the Holy Spirit bringing these things to your mind. That is not the function of prophecy, and that is certainly not the job of end times prophecy. End times prophecy comes to let people know that they have fallen short of what the Lord God requires of all of us as people. I didn't say requires of us as children of God. There is automatically a higher standard for the church because we have been entrusted with God's word. We have been entrusted with the Holy Spirit. We have received the mercy of the blood of Jesus that now cleanses us of unrighteousness and brings us into linked father and child fellowship with God. So there's obviously a higher standard for the church to keep. But end times prophecy is simply saying to humanity as a whole, I, the Lord God, do exist. And I, the Lord God, do have things to say about the way that you have been conducting yourself as people. And I will come to do judgment against all those who do not keep my covenant who do not keep my law and my judgment will be holistic. I've spoken of this before. There's not a single person on this planet that is going to escape the judgment of God. All that will happen is that if a man is righteous, that person will be treated in a different way by God during the time of judgment. Then those who have cast off God, who have refused to learn God's laws, who even, who don't even care, that there is a God or who may be following other gods. And so if we hear the prophetic word of the Lord coming, the primary function of that word is not for us to say, oh, I knew about this, or I dreamed about this, or this is the first time that I'm hearing about this. This is very hard for me. I don't want to believe it. Prophecy comes to tell us that it is time to measure ourselves against the truth of God's word. And if we find that we are not lined up in any area with what God's word prescribes as holy, righteous, and acceptable for people, then it is time for us to return to God and repent. So the Lord God gave me these words. Uh, they discuss the passing away of presidents. They discuss the hardening of the United States. They discuss um, the practice of idolatry in America. And so what is the banner scripture? The scripture that I will use here is one that the Lord gave me just before I came on camera. It is just a brief study out of Psalm 115, and I will start from verse 3. Our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. Eyes they have, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Noses they have, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not handle. Feet they have, 
but they do not walk, nor do they mutter through their throat. Those who make them are like them. So is everyone who trusts in them. And I would say that the most important verse out of this piece of scripture is verse 8. Those who make them are like them, and so is everyone who trusts in them. It basically means that these are dumb idols. They have eyes carved into them, but they can't see. They have hands, but they can't touch. Feet, but they can't walk themselves out of, for instance, various temples. If there's an earthquake, Buddha cannot get up from the temple and walk to safety. He will be shattered along with the building, and that is how you know that he is not a god. For the very least requirement of a god is that he should be able to deliver himself out of calamity and to deliver his followers if the building were to fall on them. So all who make idols and like them, including those who make their idols gold, cash, silver, their 401k, or whatever it is that they have managed to accrue and accomplish in life, is as dumb as the idol that they are following. And the Lord says that the end of anyone who is trusting in an idol means that they will be destroyed along with that idol. And so here are the words of the Lord as they were given to me for a very long time. It was a very long time that God was speaking to me. He kept talking to me over and over and over and saying these things while I was in a sleeping state. And when I finally woke up that morning, he repeated everything and then showed me pictures. And these are the pictures that went along with them. The first thing that the Lord was showing me is that there will come a time in America where there are no people in the homes anymore. And this part of the prophecy needs to be handled with care because of the particular platform that I'm on. It's, it's talking about the harm that causes harm. The solution that is put in the arm along with all the boosts that go along with that. And he was saying that there will come a time in this country where entire towns and entire cities will become like ghost towns. In fact, God was saying that it will be like these ancient documentaries, these historical documentaries that people love to watch, where it shows how archaeologists will come across uh, an abandoned city or an old city that happened to be buried under many layers of dirt. And when you dig it up, you get to see that there was a whole civilization living there, but then somehow they all seem to have died of something or they all seem to have migrated somewhere. And then the city eventually got covered with time. And so when these archeologists find this city, then that's when we get the documentary and then we sit there and we all wonder along with these scientists, what happened to the people? that lived there, where did they go? And why did they all die perhaps of something? Or why did they all migrate? And God said that America will be like that. He said that more deaths are coming. Just a moment, please. The Lord said that there are more deaths coming. So there will be an increase in death due to something that is in the harm that causes harm. And I spoke about it. The best way that I can explain it is, you know, when you have a dog and your dog keeps dropping hair all over the carpet, that word we use, we say that the dog is shedding. Why is this dog shedding all over the carpet? So hopefully you will understand. And he says that um, this thing in the harm grows and grows and grows and increases itself in the cells. And as it increases in itself in the cells, it will cause um, harmful and even toxic levels in the cells. And so uh, people will be exiting this world due to that type of increase. The second thing that the Lord said is that there's going to be a shortage of money. Please bear in mind that this prophecy is from October, 2021. He said that there will be a shortage of actual physical bills because there will be cash hoarding in the United States. The Lord said that very wealthy people are in the practice of hiding the money in this country. And I've addressed this in past prophecies already. He says that they hide the money until eventually it reaches a tipping point where there's a physical shortage of cash in the economy. And then he said that Shortages of cash in the American economy are nothing new, that this has been happening for a while because there's a whole separate money laundering world that takes place with the rich and powerful. And that is where the super wealthy take the money out of the economy and they simply stockpile it and keep it until there's a shortage of cash and until the economy is choking. At that point, they then come out and give various reasons for why they need to print more money. So please understand that 
relentless printing of money is one of the reasons that inflationary pressure comes. That's one of the way that inflation comes. So if we, we now find ourselves, this prophecy is about, I would say, eight months old since October, we now find ourselves where finally official channels are having to confess and admit that inflation is high at most recent count. What I heard is that it is well over 8%, even though some dissent with that and they feel that it is much higher than that. Understand that this constant need to print money is what happens. Um, there was another prophecy that uh, the Lord gave me in 2019 and it's called world politics america and what i saw in that prophecy is that america could no longer get goods that there were huge shipping delays in her goods the goods were no longer coming into the country and as a result of that available goods in the country spiked in price so this was at least two and a half years ago that i was talking about the fact that goods would not get into the country that there would be shipping delays that there would be extreme demand on the available goods and extreme demand on available goods is yet another economic reason for inflation so let us give the, the Lord glory for that because we have all seen these things happen and they happened almost three years after they were spoken of on the master's voice. The next thing involves presidents. The Lord said that he is going to sweep away the idols of America from the table. And so God showed me a very clear picture. And before I go into this picture and speaking of everything, I would like to say this. When you come to the master's voice, you are hearing the prophetic words, images, pictures, and revelations that the Lord Lord has given me. I am in no way expressing my personal opinion, and therefore the very least that I ask of listeners is that you will put your personal opinion to the side and do your very best to listen to the word of God without your personal filters. This is what you feel. This is your traditional election habits, your traditional voting habits, your traditional background, everything that describes you. Understand that when you come into a place where the presence of the Lord is the one speaking, it is not requiring you to pass it through your emotional or mental or, or personal filter in order for you to determine what is true or not. The word of the Lord is the word of the Lord. And the way you thresh and gauge that word is by the spirit, not by what you like. So the Lord showed me two dolls on a table and it was one of those dolls. I always meant to go back and get a picture for this prophecy, but, um, you know, life happens. I haven't managed to do that. He showed me these dolls that people used to play with a long time ago. So the doll will be like this. And usually the doll is smaller at the top. Let's try and do that. The doll is smaller at the top and then bigger at the bottom. And it's one of these rocking dolls. So it doesn't have arms or legs. It is just shaped like one unit. It's bigger at the bottom. And the reason it's usually bigger at the bottom is because there is some kind of sand a lot of sand or metal in the base of the doll. And the way people play with these dolls is you simply push the doll and then the doll rocks back and forth. So you push it and then it rocks back and forth. And the, 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 the attraction, I guess, of these dolls is that it's very hard for them to fall over. So you can entertain children with them for a long time. You simply push the doll and then the doll rocks back and forth, but it doesn't fall over because it has a weight in the base that makes it hard to fall. So I saw two dolls. I saw one doll for Mr. Biden and I saw one doll for Mr. Trump. And the Trump doll was bigger than the Biden doll. So there's a a Biden doll and a Trump doll. And both of them are these dolls that you push and they rock back and forth. And the Lord was showing me that here in America, Trump is a far bigger idol for Americans than Biden. So both these dolls, I saw that pressure was coming against them and pressure would come against Biden and pressure would come against the Trump doll. And both dolls would move back and forth, but I saw that they were weathering the pressures. I saw that they were weathering the storm. So for instance, if you look back over um, Mr. Trump's presidency, he had quite a few scandals. He had um, impeachment efforts and things like that, but he managed to weather all those things with a huge and massive fan base in this country. And then we have seen that Mr. Biden has certainly had his issues and his unpopularity issues and slipping in the polls and things like that. And yet I saw these two dolls rocking away, weathering storms and crises and not falling over because they had weights in their feet. 
And then a hand came from nowhere and slapped both those dolls so hard. It was such a hard blow that was hit against both of those dolls that they fell over despite the weights at the bottom. They rolled over off the table, both of them, and broke. And the Lord was speaking to me and telling me that he would give me words that I would speak and that America would finally hear me. He said that they will finally hear you because they will be silent at last when their towns and their cities are frozen with grief and pain and outrage. That is when they will finally be silent. And that is when they will finally hear the words of the Lord. You will prophesy to them concerning the death of Mr. Biden and that Mr. Trump will die also. And I will tell them what is coming and how they will have no idols left. America will be frozen and stripped of her constant pleasure of idolatry. And so if we go back over past prophecies on the master's voice, I think I have seen at least three times the death of Mr. Trump. And I have spoken, that was during um, the time when he was still in office. And the Lord showed me how in one case that there is actual official action to take this man's life. So I saw that it is actually um, from the official channels, as official as you want them to be, as high up as you want them to be, that there is strong opposition to this man being able to carry on any form of political career, political life, political, um, I guess you could say designs for a comeback and things like that. And I think you can find that information in the prophecy that is called called um, Ezekiel 13. That is the one where I saw that the Lord was saying that there is strong desire to cause this man to no longer be among the living so that he will not be able to have any kind of political designs in future, that um, him having political designs would not be tolerated. And in another prophecy, POTUS, I also saw that there was desire to take this man's life. And my job as a servant of the Lord is to bring forth things that I see and just to say that if any kind of harm is spoken of to anyone, regardless of your so-called affiliation, because um, sadly, people in this world, especially uh, so-called Christians in the United States, seem to think that um, Christianity is one flag that they will fly, and then they will either be flying a donkey flag or an elephant flag. And I have said to people often that if you are a wise person, you must understand that heaven does not regard your political affiliations and your political choices here on earth, and that the inside desires of a person's heart will be strongly judged by God after death. So if you do not want to fall on the wrong side of the history that involves Jesus Christ, be very careful of the things that you celebrate and the things that you are happy for in your heart. I am not a red or a blue person. I am standing here representing the kingdom of God and reading out what the Lord has said. And so these are the things I saw and the questions were coming and it was like, what is idolatry? I've covered it many times on this channel before. Idolatry is any form of mindset or action that worships the creature and not the creator. So it's taken you a long time to finally get pregnant. You got that baby and all of a sudden, because you are now a mother, your relationship with God is in the toilet because now the baby needs this and the baby needs that and the baby is suddenly the brand new God in the house. You've been a single man and you finally managed to get a wife and now suddenly your wife is above the clouds. You no longer have time for the relationship that actually led you through prayer to get a wife. You are either in idolatry or you are dancing at the fringes of that. Idolatry is to exalt anything in the landscape of your life above God. This is the landscape of a man's life. You can be as successful as you want, as blessed as you want, as wise as you want, but there is only one tower in our lives that stands up, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Should anything else begin to stand up and creep to become equal with, or even begin to exalt itself. Please understand, based on what I read in Psalm 115, either God will strike that thing down in judgment, 
where that thing becomes prey for Satan because Satan is the notable one who decided to exalt himself and wanted to exalt himself even above the throne of God. So whatever it is, is growing up. If God himself does not strike it down in the earth, that thing becomes prey for the enemy and it becomes open to all the plans that Satan wants. And Satan's plans can be filed under un only three headings, steal, kill, and destroy. So when we ascribe to human beings, just mere men who have to go to the bathroom like everyone else, but we begin to treat them and worship them and speak of them in God-like dimensions and proportions, praising them inordinately, while at the same time, we cannot lift up God. Some people cannot even praise God for five minutes. They will run out of things to say about God. But if you ask them about Donald Trump, they can speak until the sun sets and rises in five cycles. So this is idolatry. When you use words and worship of the hearts to lift up what is mortal until it reaches the point where it angers God, the Lord showed me in that Ezekiel 13 prophecy that the way that people lift up Mr. Trump, there is also another prophecy called Little Fires. The way that people exalt Donald Trump during his tenure and even now, the Lord showed me that it creates this irritating black smoke that rises into heaven and upsets him greatly. So Phrases like the greatest of all time, the goat, the goat, you're talking about human skills and human achievements, but you're magnifying them as if these are gods you're talking about. This is your children that start to cry when Beyonce shows up on stage. These are your sons whose brains are scrambled when Cardi B shows up on stage or when Steph Curry sinks five three-pointers at the same time, if that's even possible. All this stuff, the Lord says, is the heart of this nation, an idolatrous nation that makes men into gods, but casts God out of its borders, out of its daily life. This is idolatry. Idolatry is when you call a man a savior, as America called Obama in his day. Idolatry is when you call Trump the one who will make America great again, as he was called in his day. Idolatry is to shout, here is our, sa our savior. He's going to fix the economy. He's going to help us build back better, as America has said of Mr. Biden in his day. But this is what the Lord God says in his day. America will have nothing but silence and frozen shock when her idols in every single area of worship are hammered and knocked off the table. So the Lord said, you will speak what I give you and they will hear you. They will have no idols left. I will remove every man and woman that America prays to. I will remove all the false prophets that people worship and follow. Then the nation will be in terror and start to pray, but it will be too late. Their punishments will already be in effect and they will receive the full reward for being a nation that worships and idolizes man. And so I started to see these images of shock on people's faces as pastors that they love and idolize, the TV pastors, the famous pastors, the untouchables in the realm of religion and faith here in America died. I saw that even pastors who are not known at all, pastors who only have clout in their local community also died. Even those itty bitty pastors that are in congregations of only a few hundred or a few tens, I saw that they were taken away because their members viewed them like mighty gods and mighty sharks in the fishbowl of Christianity. So I saw that these people died. I saw a lot of heart attacks show up and take men and women of God away. And one of them was T.D. Jakes. Now, the Lord spoke this word to me a few months ago, but I held back this message because I said, Lord, this is a very weighty message. And you know, whenever you bring this kind of message out, it always stares fewer in the Christian community. But I hope it will be understood by now that here on the Master's Voice, I do not shy away from anything the Lord speaks. In 2019, I think it would be June, the Lord was passing judgments on people who are bringing a corrupted gospel to the nation of the United States. I saw certain people there and I will link the prophecy underneath. It is called cornucopia. And that word was given to me in, I think two or three parts. 
And as the Lord was passing judgment, several pastors was named, but there was one pastor that the Lord told me not to put his name. And the reason that the Lord told me not to put that man's name at the time is because the Lord showed me how much he loved this man. He showed me that he had singled this man out and given him this grace, um, this gift, which in, I think in Greece, in Greek is called charis, charis. And the meaning of that is grace. It is also the root word, the root of the word that we call charisma, which means that you are simply blessed with natural abilities. And God showed me that the natural abilities of this man to preach and to stir a crowd and to bring them into the deeper knowledge of God came directly from him. But then the Lord showed me that this man who was unnamed at that time became a corrupted gold vessel. And I saw a deep red wine pouring into that vessel. And the Lord said to me, Celestial, this is my judgment. And when the cup is full, I shall judge this man. And so a few months ago, the Lord told me that T.D. Jakes would be one of the people who loses his life in this prophecy that I'm now reading where God says he will take away America's idols. And when these idols are taken away, America will be very bitterly chastised. Um, I'm now saying his name because this message came several months ago. And then I think maybe one or two months ago, the Lord said the same thing. He said that in any church where the pastor has become the most important person on the agenda, he's more impor important. He's more loved. People look up to the pastor of any congregation more than they do Jesus. I saw that in those churches, those fellowships, those, whatever you may call it, people die. The next thing I saw was sports stars having heart attacks, brain seizures, brain aneurysms, uh, whether they took a hit or an injury. So normally you take a hit, you have an injury. Normally something happens to you in the field, you get hurt and then they take you off. But I saw that these people died. They died from on-field injuries. I also saw them, a lot of them having heart attacks. I saw them having brain aneurysms. I saw them having seizures and they died. America's sports stars and idols were taken away. Some of them didn't die, but their careers were destroyed. It was judgment of the Lord upon them for their lifestyles, for the fact that they lived as gods among men and they believed it in their heart, but also as judgment upon the people who treated them like gods. God took the sports gods away. Some of them didn't die, but they had accidents that broke this or that on them and their careers were destroyed in an instant. Now the Lord showed me up close what it was like when Mr. Trump lost his life. I saw that he died. I did not see how he died, but I saw the effect upon this country. It was like an earthquake rippling along the ground, maybe uh, in an 11 on the 10 Richter scale. That's how the effect was. And this effect was not a physical earthquake, but it was a response of great rage. When this man's death was announced in the vision, God showed me America like red Mustangs released to run across maybe a plateau or a Mesa, hard packed red ground. If you can imagine, um, wild Mustangs with a red body coat running and snorting in anger and rage. If you can imagine the way the ground would tremble under the hooves of such angry horses, that is what I saw. The rage of America was great because Mr. Trump was gone. And then the Lord showed me when Mr. Biden was taken away and America was in total shock when this news broke. In this vision, I saw America as making dinner. So it was dinner time and a woman was in the kitchen and she was making pasta. But when this news broke on TV, this woman's family was frozen on the couch. The husband was frozen. The children was frozen. And when the mother heard, she carried the pasta strainer in her hand and she was standing in the doorway and the entire family had to look like, and they were playing over and over and over the loop of the sudden death of Mr. Joseph Biden. And then the Lord brought the camera back to the stove and I saw that the spaghetti boiled until it turned into little bitty pieces of mess. That is how long the family followed that information and could not focus on anything else. The Lord showed me visions of how America will be stunned by the death of these famous people, famous politicians, famous actors, musicians, stars, you name it. 
It was as if an eraser was wiping out the register of America's idols. And when this gathered momentum, then I saw the country begin to pray. But it was a false repentance. It was a false prayer. I saw these big, fat, cartoon tears coming out of people's faces. The Lord made it so big. And so the way when cartoons are crying, the tears are flying. I saw these big crocodile tears coming down. And the Lord showed me that it was not true repentance, but it was gross self-pity. And this is what the tone, if tears could speak, this is how those tears would sound. Why me? Why is this happening to us? What have we done? What's happening to our precious country. That was the tone of the tears. It was angry tears. It was false tears. It was tears that we demand an answer. Like what happened at the world trade? Even when the sword of judgment came to this nation, as God had prophesied by so many people across America's generations, telling her to repent or the sword would come. When the sword began to come, nothing changed in the people. Nothing changed. It was a false outpouring, very self-centered. It was offended. People were offended at what was happening and they blamed God. They said, if he was a loving God, he wouldn't do this. Why is he saying all this to us? What have we done? And so I saw that people were angry at God, but because God lives very far away and nobody knows his address, people turned their anger towards me. But what's new about that? The reaction that came out of the country proved that God was right about everything that he ever said about America. There was no true remorse. There was no repentance. There was no confession that said something like, that's right, Lord. You are right. This is happening to us because we deserve it. You're right, and we're wrong. We've done wrong, God, but forgive us and show us the way to salvation. There was nothing like that. And so with this false repentance, the Lord gave me a picture now from up in the heights. So I was seeing as if from God's perspective, I was seeing through a massive thunderhead, a very dark sky with heavy clouds. And behind these clouds, I guess, was God. And I was seeing as if someone was watching from behind those clouds down to America. And the tone of the face of the person who was watching was impassive. And passive is when you've lived next to someone for a few years and all they do is play loud music and have loud sex through the wall and have loud parties that last, last until two or three in the morning. And they've been doing this to you as a neighbor for years. And then one day something happens next door and then they come running to you and say, neighbor, neighbor, this has happened to me. That face that you would have as you stare at them with no empathy and no feeling and not caring at all, that is what impassive means. The look of the Lord's face was as if it was a cliff or if it was the side of a mountain. He was watching at how America would not change and how America would not even say sorry for everything that they had done. Instead, they said, what is our crime? They said, why is this happening? They said, what have we done? And there was no mourning of sackcloth for sin. America did not grieve for her sin. Instead, she grieved for her human idols who were dying. And so the Lord had no compassion. And I saw him like a stone-faced mountain watching. And he said to me again, you will prophesy to them. And once these judgments begin to unfold, that is when they will listen when you tell them my messages, that is when they will finally be still. They will only hear you once they have been punished beyond what they can bear. And I have always said that on the master's voice. Everybody has an opinion because there are so many people telling people that they have choices and options when it comes to God. There's no need to listen to someone who says that God says that we must repent and come back to holiness and godliness because other people are telling people how much God loves them and how there's a revival coming and a great change and so much this and so much that. And so because there's so much option and so much choice, you can basically listen to anything that you want and call it prophecy. But the time will come when the sword is in the land 
and the most beloved ones are being cut down by judgment that they have earned and that you out there have caused them to earn. The Lord says that is when the nation will be still. And I saw these images of America. It was images and it was impressions and America was very still. There wasn't, there wasn't this big celebration anymore. You know, all these big holidays that we have, this and that, Memorial Day, Labor Day, you know, Independence Day, all these things went away. People were not interested in barbecues. They weren't interested in block parties. They weren't interested in barn dances or anything like that. There was no pomp. There was no pageantry. There wasn't even any NASCAR. People weren't interested in doing the things that a civilization does when life is fun and bubbly like champagne. I don't know exactly what happened at that point to make the country so still, but it was. Even New York City was still. The city that never sleeps. The joyous city was still. It wasn't that the city was empty. People were still living there, but the bright lights mentality, this vitality, the busy vibe, it completely stopped. At that point, America became still. At that point, America heard the word of the Lord, but it was too late and the Lord said to me that this nation will not repent. This nation believes that it is so powerfully Christian that there is no need to sit and self-examine to see, are we really Christians? Do we really walk in the truth of God's word? The Lord says that America is mystery Babylon. And all I will add there is that if you own a Bible and you've read Revelation 18, then you know that Mystery Babylon is the nation that remains defiant and hardened until she is destroyed in one hour. And so on October 14th to 15th, 2021, the Lord showed me images of what will come to this nation because the nation will not and does not want to repent because America will not come into repentance. Therefore, God will not relent of his decision and these images and visions that I was seeing ended with another look at that immovable face behind a high wall of clouds, God watching as judgments came to America exactly as he said. This is part one of the prophetic message, hovercrafts and abominable weapons of war received October 15th, 2021. I am celestial and this is the master's voice to use the master's voice. All you have to look is look below the video where you see the name of the channel. You'll see something that says sure more drop down the drop down menu and you will find everything about this ministry. You will see where the blog address is. The blog address is www.the-masters-voice.com. It is not easy to find the master's voice anymore. I explained that in the beginning, when I started this ministry, it was very easy to find the blog and it was one of the top results on Google. But now obviously because of the kind of information I am handling here, it is very hard to find the blog. So you might have to type in the search box on your browser, Firefox or whatever you're using Google or Safari, the master's voice end times prophecy blog or the master's voice prophecy blog. That is probably the only way you will be able to find the blog here on the YouTube channel. I am sharing different teachings and different inspired writings that the Lord somehow sometimes brings to my heart. And these things can be found on the community page. You cannot see these things. If you are not a subscriber, I am in no way trying to force anyone to be a subscriber. That choice is up to you. However, if you want to have access to these writings, which are not shareable because YouTube is not a sharing platform, it is a video platform. And so it does not have a share button. You can subscribe to the channel and then when you go to my dashboard, you will see where it says home, it says videos, it says playlists, and then you will see it says community. And then you will find different prophetic words that I sometimes put there before I put them on the blog or I put them there after they're on the blog. You will also find various teachings, various admonitions by the spirit about the way that we live our life and the way that we are handling all the resources that God has entrusted to us at, as his people. Um, so thank you for being with me. Thank you to those of you who continue to support me in the work that I am doing. May the Lord bless you and return your seeds to you. And until I see you again, goodbye.